Hello everyone. Let's begin with the next chapter of biology of class 9th that is tissues. Okay? Now we already learned about the cell completely. Yes? So let's come to the next part that is tissues. Now when I talk about living organisms, now all, all the living organisms are made up of what? They are made up of cells. Right? Now these cells are what? These are the basic structural functional unit of life. Right? This is the basic definition of the cell. That is, it is a basic structural function unit of life. Right? Right? So, this is a cell. Now, when I talk about the tissue, a group of cells comprises a tissue. Now, as cells perform different activities, perform different functions, it has different metabolic activities because it has different cellular organelles. Right? In the same way, the tissues also perform specific functions. Right? Now, when I talk about uh, an organism, how is an organism made? First, the cells. Next, the tissues. Next, the organs. Next, the organ system. And then comes the organisms. That makes a complete organism. Right? This is the entire organism which is made up of. Right? Then, when I talk about the tissues, the tissues, uh, there are many different types of tissues. Now, when I say about plant tissue and animal tissue, both have different names, different terms, different functions which plays an important role, right? Now, let's talk about first thing that is about the plant tissue. Now, when I talk about plant tissue, we are going to learn both animal as well as plant. So, let's focus first in the plant tissue only, okay? The plant tissue. The plant tissue is categorized into two parts. The first one is what? The metastomatic tissue. The second one is the permanent tissue. When I talk about the metastomatic tissue, it is divided into three. That is epical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. That is cambium, right? When I talk about the permanent tissue, permanent tissue is categorized into two. One is simple and next is complex. The simple is categorized another further into how many? Six. That is one is parenchyma, cholenchyma, sclerenchyma, erenchyma, chlorenchyma and surface tissue. These are the simple tissue, simple uh, permanent tissue. When I talk about the complex permanent tissue, it is what it is divided into two, right? One is xylem and one is phloem. The xylem has four divisions. Now you might be thinking there are so many classifications. Don't worry, you will be very much clear once we begin with the concept clearly, okay? So the first one uh, for complex is xylem, second is phloem. Xylem first that you can see is tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma, xylem fiber. When I talk about uh, phloem, it is uh, sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma, phloem fiber. Okay, so this is the entire gist of the plant tissue that we are going to learn it in detail. That is why I have started only with the names, with the classification, what and all things we are going to study in the plant tissue. Okay, so let's begin in, in detail about the plant tissue. That is the first one about the meristematic tissue, which is divided into three, epical, intercalary and lateral. Okay, now let's begin with the meristematic tissue. That is, it is divided into three. The first one is epical meristem, second one is intercalary and the third one is lateral meristem which is also known as cambium. Now when I talk about the epical meristem, it is located at the growing tips of the stems and the roots. Now what does it help in? It helps to grow in length of the plant. Now the second one is what the intercalary. Where is it present? It is present at the base of the leaves. And what does it do? It increases the length of the internodes. Right? The third one is lateral meristem. It is also called as cambium as I told you earlier. Now the width of the stem or the root increases due to lateral meristem. Okay. Now meristematic tissue is the only plant tissue that produces new cell during cell division. Now this was all about meristematic tissue. Uh, the next one that we have to do is about the permanent tissue. Now permanent is divided into simple and complex. Right. The simple, the first one is what the parenchyma. Now the cells which are formed by meristematic tissue lose their ability to divide. So they form a permanent tissue. Now this process of taking permanent shape, size and function is called what? Differentiation. Right? So simple permanent tissue, the first category is what? Parenchyma. It is a basic form of packing tissue. The cells are living and possess nucleus. Now this tissue stores food as in potato and beetroot. Now you must have seen a potato and a beetroot. It is completely accumulated with 
the storage that is completely the food has been stored it's been packed and that is the reason the uh, parenchyma we, we say it as a packing tissue okay the second one is chlorenchyma i hope you understand why it can be chloren because there is a presence of what chloroplast okay so parenchyma in the leaf contains what the chloroplast hence the tissue name is what chlorenchyma what does it uh, do the uh, basic function it performs the function of photosynthesis okay now the cholenchyma the third one the cells are living and elongated here now what does it do what is the function of the cholenchyma it gives mechanical strength and support to the young plants and it gives what flexibility and allows easy bending in various parts of the plant like what the leaves and the stem now next is the erenchyma erenchyma it gives buoyancy to the plant and help them to float now when i say about buoyancy buoyancy is the floating capacity of a plant or a flower that is known as a buoyancy okay sclerenchyma now the cell wall are thickened due to the deposition of lignin which act as a cement and hardens the wall lignin is a chemical substance okay which thickens the wall it is located in the stem and the veins of the leaves now it provides what strength to the part of the plant for example the husk of the coconut husk of the coconut is the outer covering of the coconut which is very hard yes or no why because there is a uh, chemical substance which has been deposited which is known as a lignin and that is in that indicates the presence of what sclerenchyma tissue the next one that we have to learn is about the surface tissue which you can also term it as epidermis now the entire surface of the plant consists of a single layer of the cell called the epidermis or the surface tissue that you can see what does it do it protects all the parts of the plant in some plants growing in very dry habitat like in cactus you can give an example the epidermis which is there that is a surface tissue may be thicker since protection against water loss is critical right so it is fleshy that you can see in order to exchange gases with atmosphere here uh, epidermis has minute opening which is known as stomata now what does stomata do it helps in exchange of gases as well as transpiration now transpiration means what loss of water right this was all about sim uh, simple uh, permanent tissue that we studied which are these parenchyma cholenchyma sclerenchyma erenchyma chlorenchyma and surface tissue which is also known as epidermis now let's move ahead with the complex permanent tissue complex permanent tissue as we uh, did the classification earlier let's uh, uh, let's go into detail about it complex permanent tissue has two types that is the xylem and the phloem right xylem when i talk about uh, it is also a process it has a process which is known as ascent of sap or you can term it term xylem as ascent of sap why because what does it the xylem do it transports the water and minerals from the roots to the different parts of the plant i repeat it transports the water and minerals from the roots to the different parts of the plant whereas the phloem which is there it transports the now as xylem has ascent of sap phloem also has a process which is known as translocation what does it do it transports the food from the leaves to the different parts of the plant right now when i talk about the first one xylem uh, about, about the components of xylem or the elements of xylem that i can say there are four first one is what it is the tracheids second vessels third xylem parenchyma and th uh, fourth xylem fiber now basically uh, first one that is tracheids and vessels both help in what conducting what water and minerals to, from the roots to the different parts of the plant well xylem parenchyma uh, and xylem fiber xylem parenchyma stores the food xylem fiber gives mechanical strength and support to the plant whereas in phloem what does it do phloem has different four m components the first one is sieve tube second is companion cells for, uh, third is phloem parenchyma and fourth is phloem fiber as xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber has a function in the same way phloem parenchyma and phloem fiber has the same function as that of xylem right but the sieve tubes and companion cells here what does it do it helps in the conduction of food from the leaves to the different parts of the plant okay let's go it in detail now when i talk about the tracheids uh, about the xylem that is first we'll let's uh, uh, talk about the four components of uh, xylem that is tracheids they are long narrow cells as i told you they are uh, they help to conduct the water from the roots to the different parts of the plant right now vessels when i talk about their tubular structure they help in conduction of what water and minerals okay from roots to the different parts of the plant xylem parenchyma it stores food xylem fiber it gives mechanical strength and support to the plant now when i talk about phloem 
कंपोनेंट सीव ट्यूब्स कंपेनियन सेल्स फ्लो एम पैर कैम एंड फ्लो एम फाइबर सीव ट्यूब्स आर वॉट दे आर ट्यूबुलर सेल्स विद परफोरेटेड वॉल्स ओके स्मॉल कैविटीज दे हेल्प टू कंडक्ट द लीव्स कंडक्ट द फूड फ्रॉम द लीव्स टू द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द प्लान वेर एज कंपेनियन सेल्स इट्स अराउंड द सीव ट्यूब्स एंड कंट्रोल्स दैन ओके विच ऑल्सो हेल्प्स इन कंडक्शन नेक्स्ट इज फ्लो एम पैर कैमा which stores food and phloem fiber which gives mechanical strength and support to the plant so this was all about plant tissue that we learned it in detail completely now we are left with the other half of the chapter that is the animal tissue we'll do it in the next class thank you so much